But where is it here? Yeah. being recognized at various levels. On one international, you will understand that it is an international day of persons with disabilities, in which the occasion as a country will be uh, celebrating through our president, on His Majesty Sir Ramaphosa will be making his speech, and we have to make sure that we are also able to join on that occasion, so we'll try and make sure that this particular program doesn't uh, uh, compromise that space. Secondly, nationally, as a country, from the 3rd of November until today, we've been celebrating the Disability uh, Rights Awareness Month, and which uh, is very important to us. But also as a social development sector, it is a great occasion that ourselves, 
as a national having collaborated with our counterparts, the Japan International Cooperation Agency, the JICA. We have collaborated in developing uh, very important guidelines that seek to ensure that the rights uh, of persons with disabilities are just not only protected but also promoted. It wants to make sure that it creates an enabling environment and a platform from which as we work uh, as government departments, as officials, as well as other stakeholders, it gives a good platform for us to be able to do that. But what is also critical, it wants to make sure that the persons uh, with disabilities are able to participate in all the public as well as uh, uh, government as well as community activities. But finally for us as a country, since we have a white paper on the rights of persons with disabilities, we want to make sure that we are able to align our services and make sure that uh, we are able to mainstream and empower uh, the rights of persons with disabilities. I'll leave that the detail uh, to those that will be uh, making their speeches in terms of the, exactly the guidelines, what they, they entail. They will be unpacking and share those uh, uh, messages with us. I think it's important for me to acknowledge the presence. Uh, in our midst, we have uh, her Honorable uh, Deputy Minister of Social Development, May Ipeleng Henrietta Bokopane Zulu. Also, it's important that I acknowledge the presence uh, who is connecting to us virtually, May Honorable MEC from Free State, May Mamiki Kamate. Also, I understand we have our partners uh, from JICA. One is with us here in the studio, and another one is connecting virtually who is uh, Otomo Hiroseki, who will also be making an, her input. But here with us in the studio, we have Mayor Eva and Derumagi, also from JICA. We thank you uh, and uh, we hope uh, the continued support and collaboration will strengthen uh, beyond this occasion that we are having today. I think it's important as well to acknowledge also the presence of our HOD, the head of department of the province of KwaZulu Natal, Menelsi Wevilagazi. And finally, I think it's important to acknowledge all the beneficiaries who will also make their inputs uh, in this occasion today. And I think uh, finally, it's to acknowledge everyone that has joined us uh, from various sectors of our society. And this is a very important occasion for us as uh, the social development. And having acknowledged everyone, uh, I now want to invite Mayor Mantip Mulam. Uh, who in the uh, uh, she promised to, to me to say in about three minutes will be able to share with us exactly the purpose of why we are here today. Over to you, Mantipi. Thanks, um, Program Director. Good morning, Deputy Minister. Um, fellow persons with disabilities, in their midst, watching today and listening, um, as we share our ideas and information on this auspicious day. Um, International Day for Persons with Disabilities. As social development, we've been striving to ensure that the social services that we provide for persons with disabilities are integrated and mainstream disability and they respond to the needs and aspirations of persons with disabilities broadly in this country. However, we as social development have been focusing more on facilities and institutions for persons with disabilities. And following the audit that we conducted, we then came to realize and notice that there is a huge gap where majority of persons with disabilities are, which is in communities, in society, in broader society. And we had to strive to ensure that we develop responsive programs that integrate their needs in community level to ensure that they can live independently in their own families and not facilitate that they, they actually go into uh, institutions. And this is in line with the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and also speaking and aligning our policies to the World Paper on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which has been developed in this country to domesticate the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Ladies and gentlemen, this led to the birth of a partnership with the Japan International Cooperative Agency, which is an agency that we've been partnering with um, and today will actually be launching the results of that partnership. What did the partnership do for us or how did we benefit from the partnership? 
Initially, when we started, we conducted, we were able to conduct a series of training across the province, nine provinces, um, within the Department of Social Development and also extending that to our sister departments to ensure that the aspect of disability mainstreaming can actually be understood and shared with, the, with, the, with their provinces. And that in itself led to the development of a monitoring tool in terms of how do we look into ensuring that the disability programs and services that we provide are responsive to the needs of persons with disabilities. Since we did that, we then realized that there is another gap, that there is lack of capacity within persons with disabilities for them to be able to go on and demand their rights. And that led to the next project that actually looked at the empowerment of persons with disabilities and disability mainstreaming at community level. That is where majority of persons with disabilities are. And today, as we hear today, the ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at all that process. What did it give birth to? A tool that can be used public-wise within government and also be shared with our study countries to ensure that the issue of disability mainstreaming can actually be implemented nationwide and also in our neighboring countries and ensuring that persons with disabilities have a voice, they are empowered and can participate at district level and community level in issues that matter on their lives. And as I said, our deputy minister will then be able today, today to share with, uh, with us that tool with the, with the uh, presence of JICA that actually facilitated the development of that tool, we will then be able to see and the, 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 the birth of that document, of that tool, that benefits all of, all of us as persons with disabilities. Thank you. Thank you, Mantipi, uh, for uh, those uh, remarks in terms of the purpose, we think we understand now that uh, we have now a tool as a country, as government, uh, that we've been able to develop with the assistance and uh, came as a result of our important collaboration and partnership uh, with JICA. And now we no longer have excuse in terms of not being able to mainstream uh, in terms of our services as well as our uh, efforts towards the promotion and protection of rights of persons with disability, but also is there to make sure that uh, the persons with disabilities are also empowered, as Mantipi's words, she said, they have a voice. So that's what will be assisting us in making sure that. But now the detail would be more on how then do we make sure that we monitor the implementation of that particular guideline to make sure that indeed over time we are able to report on how the tool has been uh, 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 used. Now I want to invite uh, our participant virtually who is a very important stakeholder from the South African Disability Alliance, Ume Meleni Lube, uh, who is the secretariat uh, from that particular uh, disability alliance, our very, very important stakeholder. She is uh, providing a message of support virtually. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, thank you for the invitation and it is a privilege and an honor to be a part of this. Uh, on this very special day on the disability calendar, we are uh, uh, talking about all the things that's very important to us, especially on the ground floor. These guidelines provide us with very good tools to take things further from the ground up and really get to the heart of the problem, not only addressing legislation, because there we are, we are having some severe issues as well, and we are addressing that. The South African Disability Alliance brings with it 22 national disability organizations. We are very happy to be a part of this program, and we would like to thank all the people on board of this project and who is fighting for the rights and the freedoms of persons with disabilities, making things better for our future. I would like to also commend the United Nations for their theme this year, which is building back better after the COVID pandemic. This has been a very, very tough year for all of us especially for disabled people's organizations, financially, especially service delivery wise, it has been very tough, but we have come through it with flying colors and we are looking forward to a very productive 2021. 
where we can actually take hands and make some serious difference for the, in the lives of people with disabilities. But TP also touched on the monitoring and we are very proud to be part of the independent monitoring mechanism, which is being established at the moment to, um, to, to take note and to ensure that legislative issues uh, is being adhered to. And we must also remember that disability is not a disability uh, for us. It is the barriers that we face in the environment. And that is the things that we want to, to um, uh, talk about. So I would like to thank you for everything and yes, continue the good work. We are with you in the struggle. Thank you. We thank you so much, uh, uh, Mrs. Melanie, for your very uh, encouraging words in terms of the message that indeed you are as well a very critical stakeholder. And of course, you are in support of these guidelines and all the efforts uh, that we are doing as government in making sure that we promote and protect the rights of persons with disabilities. I think this okay occasion will be unsuccessful uh, if it does not include and involve the participation of those that will be benefiting. Now we're going to move and receive the messages from our beneficiaries. Uh, they will be speaking on behalf of the whole nation, but we can't have everyone speaking. We have selected a few provinces uh, who then will represent uh, the, the various sectors from different provinces, from the Eastern Cape. We will also have a message of support from a beneficiary from uh, Free State, KZN, as well as Limpopo. So in that order, may I have then Mr. Zilindi Lehipane. Also, all of them will be providing the messages virtually. You will be followed by Malu Sikazu, Ona, uh, Munganaza, as well as Ronald Shabangwan. Uh, Thanks, thanks, Chair. Uh, good morning, everybody who's participating in this launch. In the name of nothing about us without us. Amen. My name is Lindile Yibane from the Eastern Cape. I am one of the many who received the training on the TEM program in Japan. Uh, firstly, I want to highlight this thing. Japan is a country that is good in implementing its laws. When I was in Japan, I noticed that in terms of the legislation, Japan is still behind as compared to South Africa, but they are good implementers. If you see a note in Japan that is saying no smoking, below it, you, you, you will get a maximum sentence. That's why I'm saying they are good implementers. <clears throat> Chair, coming to the program, I must say that the program is very important, was very important and is still very important for the disability sector. Here in the Eastern Cape, this program helped us a lot. Uh, we have done awareness on the right of persons with disability in some community around Nyanden. We were able to form e-working groups around Nyanden, which were sitting on allocated dates. We, we also, attended the disability awareness facilitation from this program. The barrier to the program is resources. Then we are begging the government to please assist these important programs by putting in resources. Thank you, Chairperson. Let's now move yeah. to our second uh, uh, beneficiary, uh, Malu Sikazu. Thank you, Chair, for welcoming me in the program. Uh, it, it's a big opportunity for us as disabled persons today. Uh, I, will, I, will, I will take uh, our, our, our part as a case again on what we have learned and how uh, this program has helped us. Uh, we have uh, attended a five weeks uh, training in Japan, where we were, uh, in Japan where we were exposed uh, in many Toria free zones and uh, many welfare centers where we, we were able to, to compare with, with us here at home as South Africans. We also received a training from National DSD and JICA on disability empowerment and mainstreaming. And we also received a training on access audit 
uh, and all all members did receive the training. Those are the things that we, we are, are going to help us going forward and to address our issues. Because like uh, Mantipi said, one of the issues we had is a a friendly user facilities. <clears throat> there are things that we've already achieved uh, in our time since we've been uh, held by National DSD province and the uh, JICA. Upon uh, receiving this program, 50 persons were identified to be profiled uh, from us as disabled persons. And the results, the result of the of the survey indicated various things, but we had we had to minimize them to the size of workable. Uh, education was one of them. Uh, employment and the economic empowerment was one of them. Transportation was one of them. Uh, lack of resources and accommodation on. Uh, visual impaired and hearing impaired people was one of the problems that we identified as issues uh, to be dealt with as soon as possible. We also received a training from CRATE being used by the office of the Premier uh, on the white paper on the rights of persons with disabilities and the, on, on the UN Convention on the rights of persons with disabilities. We also received a training on a, a community-based rehabilitation program of which we are busy trying to allocate uh, the, the province and district uh, social development and local. They are busy trying to help us allocate funds to to conduct this program in, in our local municipalities. On February 20, on February 6, 2020, there was an engagement with various departments where we were capacitated about uh, where we were capacitated on skills on business in our local municipality in Mandeni. The impact of this program has resulted in a, a, a very uh, strong working relationship with our local municipality. Uh, which is Mandeni municipality, a district municipality, Ilembe, as well as uh, local uh, government uh, offices in Mandeni and, and, and uh, our district. Our SASA has responded because it was one of those that uh, we identified, we identified, identified as, as giving us problem. They've responded by changing their, their site uh, to be accessible free as we speak, their offices have grab rails, they've got a ramp, they're accessible to all. As well as our social development, we, we identified a few things like ramps, uh, toilets, doors, and signages, all those things, and a, a double-sized parking, it's already fixed. We are very happy about uh, this program. We are able to, to communicate and advocate for, for our own rights, and we are able to, to identify that we need, yeah, we need politicians, then we need officials, yeah, we need civil society. We are so much happy, uh, very, very much happy from the National DSD, from the JICA, and uh, from our government as well. Thank you very much. Thank you so much uh, uh, for those very in interesting um, testimony that you've given in terms of how has this partnership that we are having has assisted and empowered you uh, in, even in terms of capacity building. And uh, one of the good things about this virtual is that everyone is connecting if, uh, uh, in their settings and uh, the, the, the background with the chickens as well, one can be able to get them and showing that uh, we are vast in terms of making sure that even those that are coming from the rural areas are able to participate, which I think is one of the key areas in terms of empowerment uh, through the dream that you want to do. Let's then have also the, the input that you'll get from uh, 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 one of the beneficiaries, Honor, 
uh, uh, Munganata, and that will be followed by Ronald, and then we'll move then to another uh, item. Good morning, everyone. It's Mr. Ona Munganata, Disability Coordinator from Social Development in the Free State. First of all, just to give a brief background, the JAICA DSD program in Kwakwa, in Kwakwa, in the Maluti Apofung uh, municipality, Tabon Fusina district, it started in 2016. It's a, it was a five year program from 2016 to 2020. The project started by training persons with disability and other officials on disability empowerment and mainstreaming. Various uh, uh, beneficiaries benefited from the training. From there in 2017, the project was launched, uh, was fully launched. Gentlemen seems to be muted. Can you please check your mic? Can someone assist you? You seem to be muted. Thank you. A group of with disabilities and officials were selected to have a training in Japani Okinawa. In the Japani Okinawa, uh, they come up with a document which they called the Okinawa Plan of Action. The Okinawa Plan of Action uh, was to be implemented in the province. So the Okinawa uh, Plan of Action, to domesticate it, we have to match to the local standards. So we put, we first trained uh, the persons with disability on peer counseling. As peer counseling was identified as one of the DM uh, a DM activities which will be launched in the project, so we trained the we trained the participants. Thirty five participants were trained, and then we did community sensitization in four villages, whereby we were sensitizing the community on what is peer counseling and what does DEM involve. It was attended by village leaders, community leaders, and various uh, persons with disability. After the community sensitization, we launched four peer counseling groups in the different communities. For example, we first launched in Bulata village. Then we launched again in Mangaung village in the Tabon Fusanyana district. The benefits of working with the JICA DSD project, it has helped a lot to develop the confidence of persons with disability to the extent that they are now free to participate in our activities. We, we were also able to partner with our sister departments in, the, in, in implementing the DEM and giving them a better understanding of community-based social service delivery to persons with disability. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Ona. Let's then uh, now receive our last uh, 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 colleague of ours, our beneficiary from uh, Limpopo, uh, Mr. Ronald Tlabangwane. Can we get Mr. Ronald also to make his uh, message? Are we having him online? So that to save time, I will then request that we proceed to our program with your permission, Deputy Minister, uh, that uh, now we move and receive a message of support from our key partners, 
uh, the uh, 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 JICA and the message we're going to receive from uh, Mr. Tomohiro Seki, who is the chief representative uh, uh, from JICA. And I did indicate that here in our midst, we have uh, his colleague, Ume Ueva Terumaki. Let's get the message from uh, uh, JICA from uh, Mr. Tomohiro. Okay. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Loud and clear, sir. Please go ahead. Okay. All right. Uh, Honorable Deputy Minister of uh, Social Development, uh, Ms. Henrietta uh, Bogopane Zulu, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. Good morning. As introduced, my name is Seki Tomohiro. I'm a chief representative of Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, South Africa office. Today, 3rd of December, is a day of the International Day of Persons with Disabilities. I think it is very important to hold the launch of the DEM, D-E-M, DEM guidelines on such an important day. And I am very honored to be able to participate in that opportunity. I know it is better if I could sit next to the deputy minister, but unfortunately, uh, I myself was sick a few days ago. Not terrible sick, but uh, sick. Uh, so I'm still not perfect. Looks like perfect, or I'm not sure, but uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not still not perfect. Uh, so I wondered that it will be a serious problem if any inconvenience caused to the health of everyone there. Uh, so I decided to participate online today. On behalf of JICA, um, Ms. Eva, uh, one of our staffs, uh, is participating. I remember that it was uh, 13 March of this year when the seminar of DEM guidelines was held. I know DSD has received a lot of feedback on the guidelines at the seminar in March and after the seminar. And reflecting feedback, DSD has revisioned and even not only division, even uh, how can I say, brushed up them guidelines. I would like to express my deepest respect for the efforts of DSD and of course, the leadership of the deputy minister. And I am honored that JICA has been able to support the creation of this them guidelines and also variety of cooperation programs on disability field. I believe that the four sites that have been working together in our project have also endeavored to empower people with disabilities and promote the mainstreaming of disabilities. Especially in this situation, I am convinced that it's important to empower people who tend to be left out of social services. Well, I think those who attended the seminar in March remember, at that time, I talked about democracy. And please let me, uh, <clears throat> Please allow me to repeat today. Um, democracy has a meaning, according to the dictionary, democracy has a meaning, fair and equal treatment of everyone in an organization. In short, social equality. Social equality 
is also our goal, isn't it? Then please remind our guidelines and our approach. The name is, yes, DEM, D-E-M, DEM. Then please bring to your mind the spelling of democracy. Democracy, yes. Democracy includes them. And we can say democracy begins from them, democracy, right? Democracy, uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> democracy, it means democracy begins from disability empowerment mainstreaming, them. Yes, democracy and so social equality begins from our activities. I would like you to utilize our DEM guidelines in the field and demonstrate, demonstrate, demonstrate the effectiveness of DEM approach. I thank you. We thank you too wholeheartedly and we wish you more speedy recovery, but I want to assure you that indeed, you look so perfectly well to us. So thank you for having made time and make sure that you are, are able to provide and make your message here to all of us and those that are also connecting virtually. We we'll now want to proceed and uh, receive a, a message from the beneficiaries that could not connect. And I hear that he's now ready to uh, connect with us, Mr. Ronald Klabangwane, uh, who's coming from the Limpopo province. Can we get a message from him? Thank you, Ronald. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, like he said, my name is Ronald Klabangwane. Um, in Limpopo, this is what we did. We focused much on growing a disability inclusive South Africa together. So growing a disability inclusive South Africa together is a point where persons with disabilities get to a level of accessing and participating in areas of world opportunities without having to worry about the barriers before them due to their impairments, due to our impairments. So growing a disability inclusive country, it all begins with few steps that we aligned to remove discriminatory barriers and to access, to access and participate, to recognize the rights to self-representation, to acknowledge the fact that not all persons with disabilities are alike, and that person, personal as, um, circumstances, gender, age, sexuality, religious, and cultural backgrounds, geographically, location, requires different personalities. So, sorry, 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 sorry. So in this way, speaking of removing the barriers to access and participate, this is what we did in Limpopo. We focused much on the things that we realized that they will assist us to remove those barriers. We did the trainings for access audit. We did the training for peer counseling. Peer counseling is a point whereby at least we get as persons with disabilities to empower and strengthen each other. So that way we'll be able to go on now to face the, the communities so that we, con we conduct the, the access audit, we conduct the disability empowerment trainings whereby we do the the presentation so that we we bring disability to them so that they understand what disability is. In Limpopo, we also get got the opportunity to do the trainings that um, were meant specifically to empower persons with disabilities. We had persons with disabilities undergoing a learnership of plumbing. We had persons with disabilities doing a, an IT program whereby they also received laptops. Those persons with disabilities were the, were, were the speech and hearing impaired, the, the sight, impaired then we also went on and had three representatives from an organization of persons with disabilities to join a leadership of fashion design we also oh and i'm one of them by the way we also as we speak and in the moment we are in a process of doing the driver's license i think it's 18 participants if not 14 participants of persons with disabilities in the popo um around collins chaba local municipality under the Pembe district whom are, are attending this this program from there on like i said we also did the, the peer counseling the peer counseling is a by we meet as one of which this one is continuous we never stop and through the peer counseling we also managed to i think we might have done peer counseling to almost 50 villages so far so good as we speak in one in one village 
there on from there we had persons with disabilities registering their own companies which so far so good are running we have bennett who have a, a business of his own it's a shop and one of the persons who also registered a company of his own from there on we also managed to make it upon that persons with disabilities get job opportunities as we speak i'm also working at, at, at a department of education we also have victoria japan is also an employee at boxer so this way we can say that as persons with disabilities we managed to do a lot so i believe that as persons with disabilities it's our responsibility to teach this, the community about our disability because if we're looking for an, an inclusive country and we, we can't share about our disability then i don't know what we are fighting for but this is what we are fighting for in the book. thank you we thank you so much and uh, i'm sure everyone uh, that is connected to us can agree with me that uh, the intervention, especially from uh, JICA, in terms of power, our partnership, are just not only directed to the individuals that have shared their stories, but it's clearly an investment that has been made because they've been able to transfer and share those skills uh, to the benefit of not only uh, 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 them, but also those that you are working with, as well as the, the larger population within their provinces. So it is one of those things that as we make these uh, interventions, we look at them as more of investment than, than just an element of charity of giving uh, to those that need them. Let us move, uh, we're still doing very well in terms of time, and receive a message from our head of uh, department from the, uh, uh, the Kingdom of Uwazulu Natal, Ume Unelsi Wevilagazi, who will also provide uh, the message of support, not just from the KZN, but also on behalf of all the other provinces, as uh, she could represent as well, speaking on behalf of other uh, her counterparts or peers in the in, in, in the SODs from other provinces. Over to you, uh, Mayor Nelsi. Welcome. Uh, good, after good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much, Program Director. Uh, Deputy Minister, uh, uh, all protocol observed, but uh, a special uh, greetings to our partners uh, who have made it possible for us as uh, South Africans uh, to actually benefit from uh, this program in terms of ensuring that we do trans transform uh, our uh, how we are mainstreaming, mainstreaming the disability in South Africa. I'm going to uh, share with you uh, our uh, experiences as the Department of Social Development in Wazulu Natal. I do get uh, the inputs by the program director that I'll be representing uh, the other provinces as well. Uh, I think as other provinces, as my peers, we all appreciate this program, uh, especially in those provinces where it was um, actually uh, pilot piloted. Uh, I must indicate that, Chairperson, I will not uh, repeat uh, the good inputs that were made uh, by Mr. Gazu because Mr. Gazu comes from the district where we piloted this pre program at a Ilembe district and is from a Mandini area. So the highlights that I can share with you, a uh, program director and everyone, is the fact that uh, we were able to actually train um, uh, people with disabilities uh, from the district in order to ensure that they are able to identify whatever challenges that they are placed that they have so that uh, they are supported accordingly. And also there was a survey results that we had uh, that indicated that there is high rate of unemployment amongst people with uh, disabilities. There are issues with regard to transportation uh, when they want to move from point A to point B. That was a challenge and lack of education, as well as other challenges with regard to resources, especially for those that are deaf and blind. I must indicate that with regard to the, uh, the, rate, the high rate of unemployment, there are positive initiatives that have been done by the province of KwaZulu Natal, but with regard to the Department of Social Development in particular, a uh, program director, a uh, deputy minister, and all. Yes, on the 1st of December, the province of KwaZulu Natal 
Department of Social Development in particular, we employed 18 persons with disabilities that started to work for the Department of Social Development, 18, that is one eight. And then most of them are professionals and we are looking forward to employ more in order to ensure that um, we are able to uh, 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 accommodate everyone uh, in terms of the inclusivity. Uh, I must indicate that also the workshop that we had, that engagement in February, in February it did uh, assist us a great deal uh, in terms of um, capacitating persons with disabilities in terms of the, sc the skills. Some of them have, uh, are those that have benefited in terms of the employment opportunities that have been provided uh, by the Department of Social Development. Although we are also encouraging other departments, there is good thing that has happened, Honorable uh, 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 um, uh, Deputy Minister and, mem and members, is the fact that um, when we had a, an engagement with SASA, SASA made a positive commitment in their office at Mandeni to actually uh, do some adjustments in order to ensure that the office is accessible, as well as the social development office in the at Mandeni area to ensure that there are adjustments in terms of the building so that the building accommodates um, everyone. And lastly, I think it's important to also indicate that um, uh, we are also looking at how best we can support persons with disabilities, those that fall between the category of 18 years and 59 years because that's the, 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 the majority of the people that need a vibrant programs in terms of education and school and schooling and, and, and training and employment as well. Uh, some of the highlights that one can also indicate is the development of the protective workshops into viable and sustainable institutions uh, that will contribute to the economy of the country and also issues around the psychosocial uh, well-being of uh, persons with disabilities. It's important that we look into our protective workshops and also the promotion and implementation of community-based rehabilitation program uh, for, for the benefit of the persons with disabilities. And what is also key is the issue of ensuring that there is a participation in terms of intergovernment, intergovernmental relations uh, with different stakeholders and ensuring that uh, there are forums per local municipalities, uh, district, as well as at a provincial level. And also the provision of a 24 hour uh, temporary uh, or temporary care for non-medical uh, care and supervision programs uh, that will benefit for persons with disabilities. And lastly, it's important that continuously uh, we, we provide the awareness, educational information for everyone so that we are able to run the programs and ensure that these guidelines that have been developed, uh, they benefit everyone that we have in the province uh, of Basel Natal and even in other uh, departments of social development uh, within the country. This is a beautiful program and we do appreciate the, the partnership that we have with JICA. JICA has always been with us in terms of the area of disabilities and they do have innovative programs that uh, have benefited us. We thank you very much. Thank you very much, Program Director. We thank you so much, HOD. As I said, you can see the people of KwaZulu-Natal, they connect uh, from various settings. Uh, the other colleague, uh, Umalusi, uh, had those chicken backgrounds. You can see uh, uh, the HOD uh, sitting uh, right at the back seat. I'm not sure if it means she's being chauffeured, but that's the story for another day. Uh, but you can see she's comfortable there in the car, and it means uh, people are not stopping, but we are working indeed to make sure that we continue to provide our much needed social services. We thank you once again, HOD, for those, uh, that message that you have provided on behalf of even you or other counterparts. We will now move to receive uh, the remarks uh, by uh, uh, the MEC Ume uh, Mamiki Kabate from uh, the Free State, who will also be providing the message uh, 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 on behalf of the, the MECs. Uh, MEC, the floor is yours.
thank you very much, um, the program director. Good morning, uh, Deputy Minister, uh, the acting DG, all the representatives from other provinces, all the stakeholders and participants, more importantly, people with disabilities who are with us uh, on this virtual platform and those that are watching uh, all over, we, we are appreciating the platform that we are being given today, uh, Minister, and the meeting uh, of today. More importantly, the launch of the Disability Empowerment and Mainstreaming Guidelines in partnership with uh, the Japan International Cooperation. That is highly appreciated. As the Free State uh, Minister, uh, our participant has already highlighted a lot of things that uh, we are in partnership uh, with uh, JICA with, where it has been uh, helping us. Uh, but I just want to uh, highlight that uh, they helped us a lot over and above um, training and advocacy on uh, disability matters, particularly focusing on the taxi industry. They also helped us with uh, office equipment. They donated to us a car that is uh, accessible for people with uh, disabilities. And we, it's, a, it's a mini bus. And we are always uh, thankful uh, for that, uh, Minister. Uh, we want to say to Mr. Taka Horiseki, thank you uh, very much for the contributions and we are looking forward to uh, working more together with one another. Um, Minister, um, the Free State continues to play a major role on awareness and advocacy and on uh, also looking at implementing uh, matters that are related to people with disabilities uh, in order to ensure that they are always included into our programs and the work that uh, we are doing over and above what uh, JICA has helped us with. Last year, we held four five kilometer walks ending up with uh, discussions and dialogues with people with disabilities. It was four walks, one per week, focusing on different uh, disabilities, invisible uh, dis dis disability also uh, included uh, in, in those uh, dialogues and walks. We assisted our associations for disability to host a flea market uh, in order to promote economic development and upliftment for people uh, with uh, disabilities. This year, uh, Deputy Minister, we appointed 75 people with disabilities. When I came into the department, the department was not compliant on the 2%. Um, so we appointed uh, 75 people uh, trying to you know, uh, be uh, compliant with the white paper, which uh, speaks of 7%. But at the moment, we are standing at 5% after appointing 75 pe people on a full-time base who are um, having disabilities. The number of people with disabilities in the department currently uh, it stands at 112. Uh, today, Minister, Deputy Minister, today, through the influence of the Department of Social Development, all the departments will be holding their webinars at two o'clock, talking to the staff members who are uh, having disabilities in order to ensure that we understand and appreciate the challenges uh, that are there that people with disabilities are faced with so that we could uh, be able to deal with uh, the challenges that uh, they are 
facing with. Uh, this year, we working together with um, the private sector, we uh, issued uh, 200 uh, wheelchairs and other assistive devices to people uh, with uh, disabilities. The Premier has taken a decision to prioritize people with disabilities when it comes to a building of houses. Uh, she has also committed that she is going to ensure that uh, the houses that were built in the past, which are not compliant when it comes to toilets and all that, she is going to have a special program that will be focusing uh, on that. And we are appreciative uh, a lot of uh, the support that we are getting from uh, the office of the Premier. Where we are not doing well, uh, uh, DM, is on uh, economic uh, development and upliftment. Uh, truly speaking, I can't, I am not proud of um, our footprint uh, on that one. But to try to improve on uh, how we are working with people with, of, uh, with disabilities on economic upliftment, we took a decision that five co-ops, one per district, are going to uh, create a free stand uh, hand sanitizers for our ECDs, our 1,175 ECDs, they are hand, hands free uh, sanit sanitizer stands are being made uh, by people with uh, disabilities. We continue to work with mm -hmm. the uh, protective workshops and the daycare centers for people with disabilities, give them support where uh, it is needed. And uh, we are appreciative, Minister, that uh, these guidelines uh, are going to be uh, adopted in order to mainstream uh, our work. And we want to appreciate the work that you continue to do, your passion in doing your work. You are helping us a lot and thank you very much. We thank you, MEC, and uh, we want to applaud you as well in terms of the efforts uh, that you are doing. And it is a clear demonstration that you are indeed ahead of what is in, uh, 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 aspired by uh, the very same guidelines that the Deputy Minister will be launching, which is about empowerment and make sure that uh, the persons with disabilities, uh, they are mainstreamed in all the activities that we do. And part of the initiative that you are doing, including involving them through the uh, SMMEs and also the co-ops, those are some of the elements in which I'm sure they are spouses, including within the country's recovery, uh, as well as the, the reconstruction plan, which was launched by our Honorable President uh, a, a month ago, in line with how we revive our economy as a country following uh, the pandemic, which has really, really had a serious uh, impact on our social economic status as a country. It now gives me pleasure to now invite and uh, the, the, our Deputy Minister, Meba Kopane Zulu, who will then give us her keynote address as well as uh, the launch of the guidelines. Over to you, Deputy Minister. <coughs> Thank you very much, uh, Tabani, and good afternoon, uh, South Africa. Happy Disability Rights Awareness Day. We thank the United Nations for having taken the opportunity to acknowledge disabled people around the world. We also thank the South African Cabinet for having ensured that we also adopt today as uh, South Africa's Disability Awareness Day. And we also thank the South African government for having ensured that a month is dedicated to persons with disabilities, 3rd November to 3rd December. I would like to first express my sincere gratitude and appreciation to the MEC that spoke on behalf of all MECs, 
We thank you for all the progress that you are making in the field of disability. Indeed, it's not an easy one. I would like to thank the HOD on behalf of all the HOTs, for they are the ones that will decide whether we will implement disability-friendly programs or not. We thank all the HOTs for their continued uh, support in implementing this particular program. I'd like to thank all of disabled South Africans from all of the different provinces who are beneficiaries to this program, but also who allowed us to turn them into guinea pigs as they were implementing this program. I would like to also thank um, President Ramaphosa for once again retaining the rights of persons with disabilities to the presidency and that they are now part of uh, the department, the Ministry of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities. And acknowledge upfront, and I think I need to say, as the only disabled member of this executive, I probably the longest serving member of parliament with a disability in the world, it's really not been an easy journey. And the journey is not easy, even as we stand here. Inclusion is a difficult thing to achieve. And I always use myself when I do my work, because if I, as the title holder of a deputy minister, still experiences the greatest challenges of being included in the space that I'm supposed to be second in charge remains a typical example of how difficult the journey is. From being told your staff is an extravagant, lavish entourage to not having the relevant equipment that you need to do your everyday job remains the reality that inclusion and us building an inclusive world will take more than us holding these big titles. I think as a mother of two visually impaired children, when I do my work, I always use my children as a measure to say, where have we done the progress? My first daughter is 30, my second one, uh, last daughter is 17. So I have a, 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 a living monitoring and evaluation system because I utilize my 30-year-old, I utilize myself as I'll be turning 50, my 30-year-old to say whether in the 20 years we've made the progress and my 17-year-old to say whether since the new South Africa uh, we have made the progress. But I also want to thank JICA. JICA has been with us throughout. I remember the very, very first visit disabled South Africans took to Japan was in 1994. And it is so the country that have stayed the course and stayed with South Africa as we are and believed in the empowerment of people with disabilities. But not only in their empowerment, but also in them being mainstreamed and being included. Let me take this opportunity to highlight our pain, frustrations as we faced COVID-19. It took persons with disabilities and I'm in a league. And I think sometimes when you talk about COVID, we also don't talk about the realities persons with disabilities experienced. As a visually impaired person, I have to hold on to somebody or borrow somebody's eyes to do my work. And there arrived social distancing, where you are not supposed to touch. The frustration of many visually impaired South Africans that they have experienced from being pulled apart from those that were guiding them and having my phone ring nonstop to explain to each and every person that you cannot do that. Because as a visually impaired person, social distancing is nothing but a mere dream. To those that are physically disabled, those with autism, those with Down syndrome, those who actually need that space to be looked after. It always has been a very expensive cost. But now we are a cost indeed. When you add COVID, that those that used to wash us, wipe us in the bathroom, feed us, clothe us, now need to be wearing uh, those masks, those hand gloves, 
it would not be linked to COVID very soon, but we will be told we've become even more expensive. So on a day like this, we look at us as social development being the custodian of residential care facilities for persons with disabilities, and a lot of them being NPO run, and how those NPOs very soon, some official somewhere will be telling them, we can't afford you. When actually now they've got added costs of masks, added costs of gloves, added costs of those moon suits, uh, and any additional costs due to COVID. And I don't think anyone remembers that. To the parents that lost the respite care facilities, uh, services that are home-based, to the centers and the mothers that look after disabled children, especially those with profound disabilities that are still at home, unable to receive the stimulation services that they require. We want to say we understand. And as we work towards building an inclusive society, we also acknowledge the reality that COVID did indeed disrupt disability services. To the parents whose children turned 18 and our social security agency could not assess and to those disabled people who could not access their grants, we understand. And in a day like this, it's a clear reminder that inclusion will only remain in the papers, but the realization thereof remains a challenge and COVID did not make it any easy. To those parents that were faced with children with autism, who needs to be debriefed to walk outside? For others that would call in the mornings uh, when the curfew was in place, as we observed lockdown level five, four, three, where no services were received, we really share the pain. And COVID just brought to us the realities. To the children that you needed to hold, to walk through the parks, and who, those that were dragged away from their parents when police were demanding uh, social distancing, we understand. And those are the realities that reminds us that indeed the journey of integration, mainstreaming, inclusion remains a very long one. Allow me to say in this program, JICA has been very supportive. We have a South Africa managed to actually extend the program to our neighboring countries, Zimbabwe, Swaziland, Mozambique, Lesotho, and are waiting to visit Botswana and Namibia. And I stand very proud today because as South Africa, we've provided the necessary support through JICA and JICA's offices in those countries to begin the process that disabled people should be included. What are some of the things that I think today should be about? Today, the president declared that we have pandemics covered alongside gender-based violence and femicide. We all speak about GBVF, but what we never forget, what we never get to mention, it's its contribution to disability where a lot of women that get shot, stepped, and not necessarily those that die, that lose their eyes from being punched, are actually the contributors of disability. So gender-based violence and femicide remains amongst the highest contributors of disability. With it comes the challenge of the teacher that I remember who was stabbed by her husband at the back, who is now a paraplegic and who is struggling to go back to work because the school she was teaching at does not have and is not accessible. And she has to lose that passionate job that she appreciates. To the police officer that used to be in the field and is now a quadriplegic and from being shot by her husband, the stories go on and on. And our plea as we talk about inclusion and integration and as we launch the disability empowerment and mainstreaming, we are humbly making a request. Let us always acknowledge the contribution of gender-based violence and femicide on disability. 
But let us also remember that HIV, TV, also are the contributors to, uh, to disability. For when people are very sick, when there's one wheelchair, who will get it? The quadriplegic, paraplegic, or the one living with HIV? The health professional finds herself having to make that difficult choice. To those who are visually impaired that continue to be raped and the justice system not ready to actually accept their evidence, there is work in progress. And one day that inclusion, we hope, will happen. To the not so well-trained sign language interpreters and deaf women who find themselves silent, unable to access justice, because either the sign language interpreter does not understand the deaf woman or the deaf woman does not understand the sign language interpreter. For we always make a mistake that sign language is a universal language. No, it is not. It is also influenced by whether that deaf person has been to school or not. To the women who continue to give birth to children with albinism, who are cursed at the second that they are, birth, they are born, how can you give birth to a white child when you are black? And sorry, in our family, we don't have such. Women who continue to raise. But as if that is not enough, to the ones that are always harvesting, chasing them, treating parents and children with albinism like they are there for them to take. Inclusion remains a long journey. And we still want to say the journey is still very long. Allow me once again to also say, as we launch these, we launch them under the background of understanding that COVID is not yet gone. It is still with us. And the challenges of those who are hard of hearing that need to lip read for their means of communication, while at the same time having to have a mask on in public remains amongst the painful things that needs to be understood. And we hope that these particular uh, guidelines will assist us. To mental illness still being seen as that big thing, that thing that it is okay to take medication for every other part of your body. But the minute you take it for your head, everybody thinks you belong in the madhouse. For all those who have mental disabilities, acknowledging that South Africa is a wounded country, hence the extreme GBVF, hence the extreme abuse against children, as persons with disabilities, inclusion is not on our side. It is on your side. We have lived with it. We are it. We are not living with our disability. We are our disability. My blind eyes are mine. I don't live with them. My amputated legs are my body. I don't live with it. So it is important as we work towards inclusion, we also understand that the definition of disability is all our choice. Mainstreamers, integrators, include us, acknowledge and recognize our special needs. Don't try to put us in a box. We will never fit. To all the parents who continue to raise children with disabilities, we would like to say inclusion, we hope we will achieve it in our lifetime, hopefully. But use me as a yardstick. If I occupy that highest office and I am still to be included, maybe we need to do something very dramatic. Holding the title is not automatic inclusion. Being employed does not mean you're going to receive everything you need. But we've made the progress. We've got the right policies. And we are on track to implement the integrated mainstreaming guidelines. But we are on track when we launched the, disability, the policy 
on disability rights and its implementation matrix. We committed that by 2020, South Africa will be launching the disability mainstream, em, empowerment mainstreaming guidelines. And we're here today to give that additional tool that we hope every South African will take it seriously, will utilize it, will use it, because it is that guideline, not the, for every disabled person, it's unique. So let the guidelines not be seen as the panacea and the solution for everything. We will forever be grateful and appreciate JICA's financial, technical support to South Africa as a country, as a government, but to South Africans with disabilities and our families. At this point, allow me to invite Aus Eva. Thank you very much. Apparently, we must move that way. I'm a... The guidelines where we are trying to make sure that we are understood, included, appreciated, empowered, and above all, for our special needs to be acknowledged as unique individuals. Our disability has nothing to do with our abilities. It only has anything to do with policymakers to be able to define and to categorize us. But as we launch this, and if for whatever reason any disability is excluded, please don't use these as everything and anything. Let them not be used to oppose persons with disabilities. Let them be used to empower them and mainstream them. Thank you very much. Happy Disability Awareness Day, and thank you, Muzanzi. We thank you so much, uh, Honorable Deputy Minister, uh, for the launch, and uh, I think this was uh, the highlight and the main purpose of this occasion today. And we thank you for your continued fight and how you make sure that the persons with disabilities are not only recognized during this period, uh, but it extends to all the days, as in the 365 days, including the one day during the leap year to make sure that it's only not a, 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 a fight that is seasoned, but it is a continuous fight to make sure that they are recognized and make sure that the issues of integration becomes part and parcel of the work that we do and who we are. Having said that, I think now uh, it's important uh, that we receive uh, the vote of thanks that will be offered by a colleague, uh, Mr. Kenny Malulega, uh, from the Department of Social Development, who is responsible for strategy as well as change management. We want to give you the floor, Mr. Malulega, uh, if you could take a podium and uh, give the vote of thanks. And once again, we thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Minister.
Thank you, Program Director, Mr. Tavane Butelezi, Deputy Minister of Social Development, Honorable Ms. Henrietta Bukhopani Zulu, MEC for Social Development in Free State Province, Honorable Mamiki Tavete, HOD of KZN Social Development, Men Elisiwe Vilakaz. Chief Representative of JAICA, Mr. Takaori Seki, SADA Secretariat, Ms. Melani Lube, all of our honored uh, beneficiaries, distinguished guests, colleagues, all virtual participants, ladies and gentlemen, greetings. According to Said uh, Ambrose, who lived many years ago, no duty is more agent than that of retaining thanks. I am therefore delighted to have been given this pleasant duty of delivering the vote of thanks on behalf of the National Department of Social Development and the DSD sector. To all our honorable guests and participants for blessing us with their presence and for taking their val valuable time out of their busy schedules. This year is particularly significant as South Africa commemorates the National Disability Rights Awareness Month and braces itself to host the International Day of Persons with Disabilities under a theme together building communities inclusive of disability rights, which aims to ensure that the rights of persons with disabilities are recognized. The Department of Social Development is implementing technical cooperation with Japan International Cooperation Agency, which is JICA, to develop uh, methodologies and approaches towards the empowerment of persons with disabilities and disability mainstreaming. I would like to express our profound gratitude to Chief Representative of JICA, Mr. Uh, Tomohiro Seki, for gracing this commemoration virtually and with a great message of support. We also appreciate Ms. Eva Teremaki from JICA, who is here um, physically in our midst. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation to JICA for the technical um, cooperation we have as a country, including your contribution to the guidelines and other innovative programs. I would like to propose a hearty vote of thanks to our Honorable Deputy Minister, May Henriette Bokopani Zulu, for gracing this commemoration. With the launch of the guidelines on the empowerment of persons with disabilities, may we also appreciate your political leadership, particularly in the disability sector, and the thought provoking address today in this commemoration. We are grateful for the remarks and ways of support received from our Honorable MEC for Social Development in the Free State Province, May Mamiki Tabate, for speaking on behalf of all um, MECs for Social Development. MEC will also appreciate the good work that we are doing in your province for persons living with disabilities. HOD for KZN um, Social Development, Mama Nelisui Vilakazi for the powerful message of support and for representing all our DSD HODs in nine provinces. We also appreciate the employment of 18 persons living with disabilities, uh, Bravo HOD. South African Disability Alliance Secretariat, Ms. Milani Lube, we want to appreciate um, you for the powerful message of support. Um, thank you, ma'am. We listened to the interesting testimonies from our beneficiaries in four provinces and how they are impacted by the guidelines that have just been launched, including the empowerment received from Japan and DSD. We therefore want to appreciate these powerful testimonies as received from Mr. Zilindile Hibani, Mr. Malusi Gazu, Mr. Ona Monganaza, and Mr. Ronald Kabangwan. Thank you so much. We also appreciate the good work that we are doing in your provinces. Be blessed. I'm happy to express vote of thanks to all who have helped us in making this commemoration a resounding success. This includes the program director, Obaba Butelezi, who is also acting DDG responsible for disability. Colleagues from the Office of the Deputy Minister, our communications team led by Cecilia Mka, 
team from Disability Directorate led by Ms. Manti Pemalamu, who also gave us purpose of the day. All colleagues, including our provinces, visual participants, all of our partners, the media team that is here, multimedia studios for hosting us, and all those who have contributed in one way or the other to make this commemoration a success. Thank you so much, Nkomisne. Thank you, Program Director. We have clearly come to the end of this very important occasion, and this was just for us as DSD. We know that the country and the whole world is celebrating the International Day of Persons with Disabilities, and even ourselves. Now we need to move and join all our uh, country citizens and make sure that we celebrate this day, and we'll be receiving an address by uh, our uh, state president. With those few words, we want to thank everyone, and I think everyone has been acknowledged as well. We have come to an end. Thank you.